um, at Burlington Players. So we are starting every meeting um, that we have with a land acknowledgement. Um, and unless there's somebody else who would like to, who has the land acknowledgement, would like to read it, I'm going to um, ask for executive privilege and read the land acknowledgement. So land acknowledgements are a powerful way to show respect to the original inhabitants of the land where we are currently standing, presenting, about to engage in our annual meeting. The Massachusetts Center for Native American Awareness, the MCNAA, believes that this is a meaningful step toward honoring the truth, making the invisible visible, and correcting the American stories that erase indigenous peoples, tribal history, and culture. We would like to acknowledge that the land we live, work, learn, and commune on is the original homelands of the Penacook communities with the Pawtucket village. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this territory, and we honor and respect the many diverse indigenous peoples still connected to this land on which we gather. Uh, this is just a brief statement of land acknowledgement, but if you want in, more information on land acknowledgements and their importance, uh, on the website, um, www.burlingtonplayers.com, there is more information about land acknowledgements and also information from uh, a recent panel discussion that we had on being an ally to Indigenous people. So, um, and that was a, a, a meeting um, that was a panel that was put together by um, Jason Herwin, who I see is, is joining us now. Um, so that's the land acknowledgement. And we're trying to start all of our uh, meetings, the formal and informal ones, with the land acknowledgement to remind people. Um, so uh, after that, we'll launch into the, uh, the formal part of the meeting. Um, welcome to everyone who's joined the annual meeting tonight on this, this hot evening. Um, the meeting with the, the uh, approval of the minutes from last year's annual meeting. Um, and we can do that in one of two ways. Either um, I, somebody can make a motion to waive the reading of the minutes um, and uh, just have uh, the uh, recording secretary uh, have them approved as written. Um, or uh, we can have a reading of the minutes. So is there a motion? Yes, I make a motion to waive the reading of the minutes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second. I'm sorry, was that Martha? Yeah, it was. Okay, so Katie made the motion and Martha made the second. Uh, all those in favor of waiving the re reading of the minutes from the last annual meeting? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Anybody opposed? And any abstentions? All right, so the reading of the minutes from the last annual meeting will be waived. Uh, Thank you very much. Written. Thank you, Jill. Next up, we're gonna move on to um, president, President's report and uh, the committee reports. This is gonna be a, a little bit different this year. So um, several of the board members have, have said that they wanted to speak about some of the work that's been going on in the last year. Um, I don't think I need to tell anybody that this has been a very unusual year for um, us as a theater group and as it has been for many other theater groups. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you understand how painful it's been not to be out there performing for audiences live. Um, and we have tried to take the opportunity um, to do some other types of work while we haven't been performing. Um, work on the building itself, the theater building itself, but also work in, in trying to think about and plan for um, our future. Um, you know, we've been thinking about the physical plan, but uh, we were also thinking about how and when to reopen safely um, and an organization we wanted to be when we reopened and into the future. So, Let's talk a little bit first about the, the physical plant. Um, and then uh, Alicia O'Dwyer is going to talk about um, the work done over the past year by the Co-Dyad Committee and looking into the future with that. Um, Jill Fleming is going to speak about um, work on the Trish Akowitz uh, Memorial Garden Committee. Um, Lenny Chassie is going to talk about seating and the new theater configuration. 
Um, and Kate Gluck has asked to speak about uh, education uh, in terms of CTW and, and Windmere. Um, and other, other board members may ask to, to speak about some of the work that their communities have done as well. We'll start with some of the things that we've done kind of organizationally um, to talk about the physical plans. Since, since we haven't had the audiences in the theater, it's been an opportunity, we've looked at it as an opportunity to, to kind of um, do a makeover on the theater. Um, uh, part of that makeover has been a lot of work in the theater just to make it look better and more presentable and more professional. Um, so there's been um, patching and painting um, on the ceiling over where the audience will sit, um, removal of bird's nests that were there, um, added cable trays along the large beam to eliminate the clutter of um, holes that some audience members may have noticed kind of hanging down into some of the streams of light if they, when they've attended the shows, um, removed about a thousand gun staples from the auditorium, um, replaced three lighting pipes in the audience with what's called Unistrut, which just gives us a little more flexibility in terms of lighting, added a few more lighting positions over the audience, um, removed all the, the, the hook, all the hooks in the ceiling have been painted uh, black to match, so they'll kind of fade away um, and not take away from um, the magic of the theater. Um, cover the control panel, panels and speaker wires that travel along the corners of the ceiling, replace uh, stage work lights, doubling the brightness, um, which for any of you who are also um, of, of my age, uh, will be a good thing when you are auditioning in person again on that stage and read the script. Um, with eyes such as mine. Um, also to, um, there has been a new digital dimming system that has been purchased for the theater and is being installed by an electrician. Um, this is going to um, give us the ability to move this, the lighting from what we currently have to more LCD lights, which would be a huge improvement for us um, over time. Um, we also had to purchase more cabling as we expand for that. Um, we increased the electrical wiring, um, so it's being upgraded and running a new bigger line directly from the main electric panel um, in the prop room uh, so that we won't have any uh, problems running all the lights that we want to be able to run for the shows. Um, also, and don't laugh at this, but also uh, the lighting in the cast bathroom was fixed. Um, okay. Those of you who have sat in the audience, you may not know about that. We had a light in the cast bathroom that didn't have any kind of switch, so it was always on. Um, and this was not obviously not a good thing for many reasons, but that has been fixed. So now this now it turns on and off. Um, we also during this last year hired our first employee. We hired a part-time employee, Wesley Stanky who is a part-time bookkeeper for us, handling deposits and paying bills, doing entries in QuickBooks, reconciliation and gathering information for tax filing and other inquiries so that um, the person in the position of treasurer can focus on really being the treasurer, um, you know, gathering together a finance committee um, and doing more strategic planning for the organization as opposed to having to do the day-to-day -day bookkeeping. Um, the, also during the year, the city replaced the soffits all around the exterior of the theater building. Um, after we evicted the squirrels that would come and visit us from time to time and volunteers from the players, uh, painted the soffits all around the building after they were put up. Um, the soffits are a good thing because they mean less rain in the building when there is rain outside the building. Um, I was going to also mention, I don't know whether you want to talk about it um, later, Jason, but I was also going to mention some of the, the panels that we did this year. Um, but certainly, if you want to talk about those um, later, we, you, I'll defer it to you. All right, great. Um, and uh, I think that's it in terms of the stuff that I want to talk about, because we do have different members of the board who want to talk about kind of some of the work that they've been doing. Um, I talked about some of the physical plant stuff, but um, they certainly can get into um, some of the work of different committees. So first up is uh, Alicia O'Dwyer, 
uh, who chaired the CODIAD committee, which is the Committee on Diversity, Inclusion, and Anti-Discrimination, right? Right. It's yours. Thanks, Robert. Um, members of the board and members of the Greater Burlington Theater community, I want to thank you for hearing me speak today. Sorry if this seems a bit disjointed or long-winded. I've been trying to figure out for weeks exactly what to say tonight. And in the end, as I do with most things, it came down to the last minute. In the past year and a half, we formed a new committee here at Burlington Players, the Committee for Diversity, Inclusion, and Anti-Discrimination. We pronounce it Kodiad, mostly because it's fun to say. But we call it that because we felt that while diversity, equity, and inclusion are absolutely necessary and worthy goals, the quality of actively standing against discrimination in all forms is the only way to actually keep discrimination out of our theater community. Now, let me share with you a few things I've learned on this committee in the last year and a half. I volunteered to put Kodiad together with the intention of building a diverse team of enthusiastic people to work together to hold Burlington accountable to the goals of becoming a truly welcoming, equitable, inclusive, anti-racist, anti-misogynistic, and LGBTQ-friendly environment. I figured once that was done, I would pass the chairperson baton to someone with better organiz organizational skills and more experience at not being white. My own particular neurodivergence means I am great with coming up with ideas and writing them down, but horrible with organizing tasks and follow through. And I knew we needed someone with these, skills at the at, with these skills at the helm. I thought putting the committee itself together would be easy enough, and at first it seemed to be. However, when most of the bylaws we had written as a team failed to pass and a new term started, most of those people decided not to come back. And I had to start over building the team. This time it proved to be a much harder task. What I've learned in the last year is that as many good hearted people we have here at Burlington and in the greater theater community, we have largely failed to win the trust of BIPOC actors and production team members. Over the past several seasons, we have had countless white people grace our stage and only a small handful of BIPOC individuals. We've had no BIPOC individuals on our board that I am aware of and only a few on our creative teams. And while one of those people shared with me that they had a wonderful time working here, they also said that they had had no idea we even existed until they saw our posting on Stage Source, an organization we only joined less than two years ago. This speaks to problems with our outreach and marketing. We need to ask who we've been marketing to, where, why, and how we can keep doing better. We need to stop reaching out to the few BIPOC actors we know when we really need to fill one specific role and start reaching out to them and valuing them for all shows and for as many roles as possible. Now, why is all of this so important? After all, Burlington and its immediately surrounding community is about 75% white. Doesn't it make sense that most of our community is also white? Well, yes and no. First of all, the percentage of white individuals to grace our stage and work on our teams in the past few decades and even just the past several years has far exceeded 75% which means about 25% of our community has been underrepresented, just our direct community here in Burlington. But beyond that, even if our community was only five or 10% BIPOC, we still need to be telling their stories from their own voices. And we, and by we, I mean white people, need to be hearing them right here on our own stage because only by hearing their stories can we truly build the empathy and compassion that's necessary to drive social change forward. Their stories matter. The stories we tell matter. And this brings me to the crux of the problem, white supremacy. White supremacy is everywhere. It is not a political issue, it is a fact. Our country was built upon the premise of white Anglo-European supremacy, and it is deeply ingrained within all of our most sacred institutions. That includes our community theaters. We like to think we are somewhat immune to it because we're volunteer run and nobody's being paid, and we welcome anybody who wants to join us. And I would agree that at first glance, this seems to make us equitable, but in actuality, it doesn't. 
White supremacy is evident when we sit on an all white community theater board and don't think to ask, our, ask ourselves why there are no people of color in the room. When we accept that situation as okay as just the status quo. White supremacy comes in when we sit on a play reading committee and don't really think about the fact that almost every play we present is written by white people, mostly by white men, many of whom have been dead for years. And not only written by white people, but with casts that are mostly white and mostly male. And just another side fun fact for you, nationwide, more than 60% of actors are women. Yet over the last few decades, we've garnered only 30% of theater roles. I don't need to tell you that that's a glaring disparity and says something else about whose stories and points of views we have most valued. Professional theaters have been making strides forward because they actually pay people and so are starting to hold themselves accountable. But our community theaters have been painfully slow to get on board. In fact, here at Burlington, it has only been in the last couple of seasons through the very hard work of a finally predominantly female play reading committee that we have actually achieved 50% gender parity in our seasons. Even 50%, however, still does not quite match the audition pool. And again, a full 25% of our immediate community right here in Burlington is not white and we have not been telling and therefore not showing that we value those stories at all. So how can we change this? Well, putting together a committee is a start. The next step is in respecting the people who invest their time and energy into that committee, into trying to change the structure of this organization, in listening to what they have to say, in following their lead. I have to be honest, and this is me being frank with you now, and believe me, I know I myself have made loads of mistakes in the past two years and have also been culpable in cultivating white supremacy. I have to be honest that in the last two years, I personally have frequently felt spoken over and condescended to on multiple occasions when out advocating on behalf of Kadayad. I've also felt that I was handled very passive aggressively and that direct frank conversation was frequently avoided in favor of always trying to pat ourselves on the back and speak in compliment sandwiches. And I'm a white woman is it any wonder that BIPOC men and women might be hesitant to join our board? How could they ever hope to accomplish anything if that is the way we cho choose to communicate with one another? A board of directors cannot operate from a place of passive aggression and fear of criticism. It must operate from a place of honesty, fearlessness, and a willingness to share ideas, and yes, even call one another out sometimes. If we're going to defeat this beast of white supremacy on our board, we as white people have to learn the language of straight talk. And that doesn't mean talking over one another. Straight talk means really listening to what everyone has to say, no matter how much the truth might sting, and accepting the criticism without getting defensive and shutting down. It means talking problems over face to face or on the phone, not just via email. It means carving out time for extra meetings when necessary and working together until a problem is resolved, not burying uncomfortable topics under the rug because they are a threat to, way, to the way we have always done things or a threat to the structure which has kept us financially in such great shape. We cannot fight the white supremacy within our community and ourselves if we aren't willing to take risks, if we aren't willing to restructure and not only the white supremacy, but the misogyny, the ableism, and the lack of attention we have shown to the trans and gender fluid communities in the stories we've been choosing to tell. The stories we tell matter. Theater isn't just for fun. Theater never has been just for fun. Theater has always been a means for education and social change, a means for building and influencing empathy, but it can also be destructive. If we do an old comedy, just lighter entertainment, right? If we do a comedy where the jokes are uncomfortably racist or misogynistic and we do nothing to change the setup of those jokes, we are giving the audience permission to laugh at those jokes. In fact, we are welcoming them to do so. Why are we even considering telling those stories anymore? I can tell you having sat on the PRC the last few years that we've had to weed out quite a number of those submissions. 
and other companies that we all know and have worked with aren't even thinking twice about making those shows part of their seasons. Theater can be fun, theater can entertain, but make no mistake, life imitates art. And so the stories we tell matter, all of the stories. And because of this, while forming Kadaya to hold us accountable is a start, it isn't enough. We all have to get firmly on board with becoming actively anti-discrimination anti in all its forms. We all have to get on board with thoroughly educating ourselves about what that means and how to do it. To the incoming play reading committee, please, Please take your responsibility to decide what 12 stories you will put through to the annual marathon very, very seriously. We will be the first play reading committee in a few years with more men than women. Men of the play reading committee, I give you 50% plays written by women, at least 50% gender parity of characters to match our actual audition pool. All of you, please scour Kilroy's list, the new play exchange, bookstores, libraries, the internet, and every other resource at your disposal to find plays written by BIPOC men and women, transgender people, gender non-binary individuals, and people living with disabilities and neurodivergence. <laughs> priority to read the first. Somebody please mute yourselves. We're getting a lot of feedback. To the incoming board, please do everything you can to support Kodiad in bringing in a diverse new community of actors and production team members. Don't just expect them to do it all. Understand that I actually have not found that super organized person who is willing to take over as chairperson. And putting together the team we have now took a long time and a lot of outreach. Please do not take it as your responsibility to act as devil's advocate to everything they bring to the table, but instead listen, take them seriously and offer suggestions for how to implement their ideas. Help them implement those ideas. Be at their disposal. To the nominating committee. I know this last one has been a bit of a rush for you, so by all means, take a good break but please start again as soon as possible. You all have a full year to start thinking about next year's term and who will sit on this board. Start finding out about members of the community now. Who has truly been making an effort to be anti-racist? Who has truly been supportive of anti-harassment and gender parity initiatives in the community? Who can we trust to really get on board and make meaningful changes? To Jason Herwin, my rock, for the last two years. Thank you for everything you have done to support Kodaya, to support the EMAC DNI team, and support me personally when I felt like I was losing my mind. <laughs> I am so sorry that I have to step away from Burlington right now, but my family and my mental health need to take priority right now. I so look forward to working with you more in the future when I am back on more solid footing. To everyone, I'll leave you with just this. The stories we tell matter. They are at the heart of social change, the heart of empathy, the heart of human connection. Please take this power that we have as artists very seriously. As a great philosopher, I think it was Spider-Man's uncle once said, with great power comes great responsibility. Please art responsibly. We are in a moment and we cannot just let the moment pass without holding ourselves accountable to making real lasting change. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Jill, I think you, you wanted to speak next. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Thank you very much, Alicia. Your words strike me to the heart. I really appreciate working with you this year as well on many different projects. Um, I'm proud of you and your committee and what you do. Hi, I'm Jill Fleming and I'm the acting secretary for one more day. Um, I, I welcome the membership. Hello. I know quite a few of you and if I don't know you, I'm sure to meet you 
the up and coming year. Um, I'm here to represent um, a work that Alicia and I are very, very proud of. We also have a very small committee as well that involves a few more members of our community. And that is um, the renovation of the garden area in front of the um, theater. We are calling it the Tricia Akowitz Memorial Garden. Um, I know that many of you may have known Tricia. For those of you who have not, she was a long-standing friend, a passionate artist, a passionate actress, as well as past president for the Burlington Park Playhouse. Unfortunately, her life was cut short due to pancreatic cancer. Um, I know that we have done some memorial um, things in her honor, such as bringing her picture on stage. Um, there's a banner at the edge of the stage door as well, but we wanted to do something bigger. So Alicia and I are the co proud to be the co-chairs of the garden. And Alicia, I hope that you can come dig with me as well. <laughs> it's good for your mental health. Um, I'm here to tell you what's going on with the garden. Excuse me, Jill, I, I have a, I have a uh, picture, if you don't mind my sharing my screen. Oh, please do. I was some, like, some of the work. Okay, can I, can, I, can I lead into it and then? Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. Great. Right. Um, we are quite proud to, to unroll this memorial garden. Um, it's not just for Tricia. It's in memory of past players who have passed away. I know that this year we've had a significant number of people pass away and we are near and dear to our hearts. We want to include them in this effort. But we've been working with the city of Burlington and uh, the director of recreation, his name is Brendan Egan. And um, Brendan Egan is a, a fond supporter of the Burlington Park Playhouse. Um, we are constantly, he's constantly checking on us, making sure he thinks that we do a really good job at taking care of the, the playhouse. Um, and he's a proud supporter. So we brought it to him, Alicia and I brought it to him that we would like to do something more formal and more memorial in the courtyard. I thank you, Alicia, a million times. I can't thank you enough. Alicia and I dug on our hands and knees and put in 400 purple bulb, tulip bulbs this past fall that came up beautifully. And in honor of purple pancreatic ribbon, in honor of Trisha, Robert will now show you a picture. I hope. <laughs> It was beautiful. Oh, wow. The light on that tree, I don't know if you're ethereal or if you're, you're spiritual in any way. I took this picture and I do believe that that is the spirit of Trisha right there, <laughs> loving her purple tulips and uh, enjoying the, the renovations that were installed. Thank you, Robert, I appreciate that. Wow. No lighting was done, that was a regular <laughs> photo. So um, going back in time on Columbus Day, Indigenous Peoples Weekend, we had a theater cleanup. And I wanna thank all of you who participated in that cleanup where we worked and cleaned and pruned and weeded and got dirty and, and pulled out or probably poison ivy. Thank God to you guys for doing that, which paved the way for our garden. Um, the great relationship between the Playhouse and the Burlington Recreation Department is tantamount. Um, it seems that Brendan Egan will, with re within reason, um, give us anything that we would like within reason. The Burlington Park play, uh, the, the, I, I went to Brendan and I said, you know, we don't have a spigot and it, brought, it was brought up in many board meetings. We don't have a spigot to bring a hose to the outside to water the flowers. So immediately Brendan found out and a spigot was installed by the Burlington um, city. I was so very proud to be able to water those beautiful flowers. Um, it was absolutely beautiful this past spring. In the upcoming year, we anticipate, um, Brendan is on board with the removal and restoration of all our ramps and our porches. Um, we, we really talked to Brendan about better accessibility for people um, rather than you know, taking people with walkers and wheelchairs through the gravel that you all know, through the slush and in the in the courtyard. Um, we wanted to up, upgrade uh, it so disabled people and, and ambulatory challenged people and patrons could get into the theater with much more ease. And lo and behold, Brendan Egan and the incredible um, Burlington Recreation Department have agreed 
to pave our courtyard for free. For free, did you hear me? For free. Um, he'll be working with myself and Alicia and the team um, to decide what areas we would like to pave. Um, we're getting rid of the, the gravel, um, yet we wanted to do it in a, in a very classy way. We just don't want it to look like tarmac you know, paved road. Um, he's also, an, an idea that we also have initiated is, and we'll be, you'll be hearing more about this in the upcoming year, is we would like to do memory pavers where engraved bricks um, will, be, you will be able to purchase an engraved brick for a loved one or if you would like to put your own name as part of being the Burlington Park Playhouse family. Um, we've, we're still investigating prices and um, making, Alicia has been wonderful about making forms so that we can bring that into initiation where you too can have a memory brick in the walkway of the newly paved Burlington Park Playhouse. So I ask that you consider that when we go through that initiative and make that a reality. Um, Alicia, I turn to you. Is there anything I've forgotten? I don't think so. I think uh, I think that's I think you've covered just about everything. Um, we are so proud of our courtyard, and it's just beautiful. You have to come up there next spring if you can. It's, it's, did you it's talk about um, Alan at all? Oh no! Why don't you talk about Alan? Can you do so, that? Yeah. So Trisha's brother. Alan Ackwitz um, reached out to us and he was very moved by the garden. So he just wanted to, um, to volunteer to have something engraved to put in the courtyard. So, um, so he will be paying for that. Um, and that, that's really all I wanted to say. <laughs> if you or Thanks, any of you are interested in helping work on the garden, if you could please shoot me an email, that would be lovely. I, I, or, or I don't know, should I put it in the chat? I don't know. What should I do, Robert? Uh, I was on mute, sorry. Um, they can email you at, at jill at Burlington Players. Jill at Burlington Players. Yeah. Yeah, dot org. Um, I, I, I really want to have beauty in our playhouse, especially given all the new um, renovations that are due to happen. And I want to say thank you to the few people who had volunteer. My mom is very sick and I'm in Vermont at this time caring for her. So I had to kind of drop the ball on our going forward plan. But thank you to those of you who volunteered to be a part of my team. I love you all. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, moving on, uh, Lenny, I am. Um... Lenny Chassis is up next, and he's going to talk about the seating committee. Um, I do have the do have the, the, pl the plan, Lenny, that I can put up on the screen. Um, let me know when you want me to do that. Let me know when you want me to do that. I'm getting an echo right now. I'm getting an echo. Okay. Uh, when you were speaking, Robert, there was a huge echo, so... Um, all right. Okay, you can sure. You're on mute. Okay, you can sure. Robert. You're on mute, Robert. Robert's on mute. Robert, you're on mute. Robert, you're on mute. And Martha, mute your computer. And Martha, mute your. All right. Can you hear me now? I yes. can hear you. Okay. Perfect. Um, I was just saying I have slide the slide presentation about the new seats and the reconfiguration. So let me know when you want me to bring that up so people can take a look. Okay, first I'll just say that um, we had the prototype last year's meeting, which I didn't make, which I wasn't able to be at. But uh, if I can hear you, Len. A year ago, excuse yes. me. You can hear me either. I'm not on mute. Wait a minute. How about this? Hold on. Oh my God. I think it's just a vo uh, volume thing, Lenny. Okay, how about this? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay, so I don't know what's happening with all the technical difficulties. Uh, a year ago, we had a prototype for the seat. And a year later, we're still on the project. Um, apparently, it's hard to just renovate a building that has 
<clears throat> that is owned by the city and that has what we would like to renovate has been tacked on and added on and now isn't up to code. If you wanna do anything and you let the inspector in, everything has to be brought up to code. So we're in that process right now and also redesigning the stage um, was quite interesting, but there is a finished design which keeps the main playing part of the stage intact, slight changes, but the stage will more obviously play towards the direction of the sound booth, which will then be encompass both the stage left, well, it's stage left and right. Um, and some of the seating will be a different configuration improved. Um, and the risers will be rebuilt. We're in the process of, well, we demoed most of them, but they really made those risers. <laughs> Uh, so the construction crew who comes in to build the new ones will uh, demo what's left of them. And then the new risers will be built. They will be clean and nice and up to code, step height wise and all that. <clears throat> and the seats, the seating company has, has all of the money. So they're just waiting. And now the last thing we have, um, we've received approval by the uh, Parks and Recreation Committee. Now we're waiting to hear uh, uh, the result of a conversation with the building inspector, all should go well. And that's where we're at right now. So I don't know, Robert, maybe you'd want to show. All right, can people see the screen now? I see the seating proposal. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is really the, the drawing of the revised seats and uh, the proposal that was submitted to the Burlington um, Park and Recreation Commissioners uh, who voted uh, unanimously in favor of, of this plan. So uh, as Lenny said, uh, at this point, we're just uh, going back and forth with the building inspector until, uh, until he is satisfied that um, the, the plan is up to code and, and uh, he can put his seal of approval. The plan also includes um, removable seats in the front rows um, on both the, uh, the stage left and right sides um, so that we can fit the, um, the ADA uh, number of wheelchairs that we would be um, that would be compliant to have um, according to their guidelines uh, so that we'll be able to accommodate up to uh, four wheelchair patrons at any given show with uh, a seat next to them for the person who, who comes into the show with them. And this is just information about the platforms themselves and the specifications from uh, Hussey, uh, that is the, uh, uh, the building, uh, the uh, seating. So, and the- uh, to the seats. I'm sorry? Interesting name for the seats, Hussey. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at least these seats won't have springs coming through the fabric. <laughs> that will be a huge improvement. It will be amazing. Will be very comfortable. So, all right. You know, Four-hour shows, and you won't mind at all. <laughs> yes, we do have we do have a a, a prototype of the seat uh, in the theater, and I think I think at this point everybody on the current board has sat in the seat and approved of it heartily. Um, the 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 chair committee or the seating committee, um, several members of the board were on the the seating com committee. Uh, Jason, Alicia, Lenny, um, you know, looked through all the different types of chairs that we could get for the theater. Um, and I think they picked out a really, a really nice model of, of chair that will be, that's very, very comfortable, especially compared to what we have. Anything else you think of, Lenny? 
Um, no, just waiting for the next. I know my tenure will end here, but I am. Um, I would love to still be involved in when the next thing happens, sure. you know, painting or whatever. You know, the installation. Um, I'd love to be involved with that. So. Yes. So, no, that about covers it. Yeah, I'll talk about it a little bit later in terms of some opportunities for people to get involved uh, with some of the work that we're doing in the Playhouse. Um, but one of the things that we are going to be doing is during this process is is repainting the walls of the theater black so that a presentation, you know, that the theater itself kind of fades away so people, the audience focuses on the act on the stage. So that'll be one of the, one of the volunteer opportunities. Let me know when you do that. That's that's something easy I can do. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, even I can paint solid black on a wall. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Lenny. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Katie, you're up. Or Kate, I'm sorry. I, I keep doing that. It's, either one is good. Either one of those names is good. Um, so hi, everybody. I'm Katie Gluck. I'm one of the two directors of education. And I just want to take a minute and give uh, the ed programs a little love because we actually have been running all year um, virtually. And since we last saw you, I guess, last August, um, you, you may remember that our Children's Theater Workshop show shut down during Tech Week just a couple of days before we were going to go up. And so um, those seventh graders who normally would be graduating from the program, we welcomed into our virtual programs for one extra year. Um, we ran two sessions of classes, of six classes per session online, and for grades one through seven and a half, eight, almost eight. Um, and we did two shows. So we did uh, the Windmere Family Theater did an original uh, piece written by Jennifer Susi called The Office, not that one, in parentheses. And that ran online. And in Children's Theater Workshop, we did an online show called uh, Virtual Complaint Department and Lemonade, super cute. Um, and we did an online production of that. And because the production company was really generous, we got unlimited broadcasting rights. So we played it on BCAT, which I think we're airing on BCAT tonight. Um, so that's Burlington Cable Access Television. It's our local town cable station. And they played they played it um, on a loop. They played it over and over again. It was great. I heard from so many people in town. The kids were psyched to see themselves on TV. It, it gave us that feeling of performance, even though there was no, the kids didn't actually see the people watching. Um, so we're hoping to partner with BCAT again in the future. Um, what else? Uh, oh, it's also on YouTube. Because of those unlimited broadcasting rights, it, it lives on YouTube. And so we can, and it says, has our name on it, has our website on it, and it gets viewed pretty regularly. So that's nice. Um, we also, um, in speaking of memorials, one of the earlier Lifetime members that we lost back in the 90s is Sandy Perney. Many of you probably knew her. She was extraordinarily important to me personally and to many, many others. And when she passed, we um, started the Sandy Perney Memorial Scholarship, which is a $500 scholarship that goes to a graduating senior at Burlington High School. Um, and this year's recipient is Doug Edwards. And Doug Edwards came through our Children's Theater Workshop program into Windmere. His mom happened to, and his uncle, um, his uncle Greg, his mom is Karen McDonald, who's now Karen Edwards. She stage managed a million shows. She directed a bunch too. And, was just a, a, a long time player. So her son, Doug, is the recipient this year. And uh, going forward, we're hoping to have children's in person. I mean, I'm gonna hope that we can do it. I'm gonna plan that we can do it. And if we have to switch it up and change to virtual, then so be it. But our plan is to start children's theater workshop classes in mid-September. And like normal, they'll run for nine or 10 weeks will teach creative dramatics to grades one through seven and stagecraft to grades four through seven. Um, Kiara knows all about that. She's a CTWR <laughs> and Chris too, right? Um, so if you are interested in getting involved in that program, we welcome the help. If you'd like to teach 
a class or many classes. We've had lots of guest stagecraft teachers who've come in and done a presentation on whatever it is that you like to do. Um, or if you'd like to be a regular teacher, of course, I'm open to that as well. Uh, so my email is kate at Burlington Players. And you can also get me on Facebook. I think I'm friends with most of you. Uh, I think that's it for me. So yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks, Kate. All right, um, Jason, did you want to talk about some of the the panels that we have this year? Sure, I can talk about some of those. Um, yeah, hard I, mean, I don't want to put, to, don't, don't want to yeah. put you on the spot, but just uh, I think it's important just to, to tell people some of the stuff that we've been doing over the last year. Um, that's Absolutely. Um, Part of me, I just had some dental work done, so oh, no. <laughs> if I'm like drooling at the mouth. Um, yeah, so this past year, we've um, done a few pa panels. Um, first, I want to say thanks to Alicia. I feel the same about you, and all your words were beautiful, um, and we're certainly going to miss you. Um, so this year uh, on the board, we got past um, land acknowledgments, which was a... Um, a beautiful thing that we are starting to do now um, through virtual meetings and they'll be part of um, part of our performances and prior to uh, rehearsals and shows and all that. Um, we did a panel, oh gee, it was probably time and space continu continuum has been, I, I don't even know what month it is. Uh, we did a panel on disabilities. Um, where we invited uh, members of our board and some other local uh, board, uh, members of other boards to sit in and listen to uh, actors in the community um, speak about, you know, uh, the challenges they face. Uh, we also had a, a panel on um, racism and how actors of color in the community uh, have been treated or feel, feel as though they're treated in certain scenarios. Um, for folks to listen to and engage in questions. Uh, the last panel we did was how to be an ally to indigenous people. Um, again, the same situation where folks were able to ask questions and um, listen to how, how folks can be allies to indigenous folks. A um, couple exciting things is uh, Burlington Players is now uh, part of the Burlington Equity Coalition, which is in Burlington. And uh, we, we're partnering with them and uh, we have many more things coming down the line uh, with that organization. Um, and we had a large outreach at Burlington Pride, the first ever Burlington Pride this year, which was great. Uh, many folks didn't know Burlington players existed. So uh, that was really exciting to engage in the community. And we're starting to really uh, ramp up our marketing and outreach work. Um, and currently, right now, we're working to pass um, a, another position in the theater for a diversity director, and I feel like that will really help help bring us along here uh, with with what we've been slowly doing throughout this past year. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure, and um, yeah. All right, thanks, Jason. Um, I, I should also mention that Jason is probably being modest, but Jason also put together um, a, a two-hour training program um, that has been sent out to the uh, was sent out to the current board um, on anti-racism, um, and it's going to be some important work going forward for the board uh, and for uh, people who uh, come to work with uh, with the group. So thanks for that as well. All right, uh, anybody else uh, from the board who wants to talk about work over the last year while we've been kind of in recess or anything we missed? All right, uh, not hearing any, any additional, I'm gonna move on um, to uh, a little bit of a report on um, COVID preparedness and then talk about plans for this season, because I know that's kind of where, where people are, are looking. Um, in terms of COVID preparedness, uh, the board did put together a, a COVID subcommittee, COVID reopening subcommittee, to talk about how, when, and uh, 
and, and what we need to do to be able to reopen safely uh, at the Burlington Players. Um, I think all of you uh, know that uh, Burlington is a very intimate theater space, uh, which means it makes it more difficult for us than for some big barn type of proscenium um, theater company to reopen just because of distancing. Um, but the reopening subcommittee uh, had several different meetings and did research aside from meetings. Um, and some of the conclusions we've come to is that we will continue to monitor and abide by state guidelines. We'll be filing a plan um, before we reopen um, to specify the steps that we're taking to be able to reopen safely. Um, some of those considerations um, will be social distancing for the, the cast and the crew, um, hygiene protocols, um, staffing and operations um, types of type of considerations. One of the things that we worked on, um, and uh, in this regard, uh, members of the board and especially uh, uh, Lydia and Devere Yard um, did a lot of work on developing an understudy plan so that if we have somebody in a cast who uh, gets sick with COVID or feels that they might be sick with COVID, that we have a plan for that. So they are not um, you know, coming to the theater um, when sick with the potential to spread the, spread the disease because it's the last thing we want. Um, so we also have done some um, purchasing for the theater to prepare for reopening safely. Um, purchasing some hand sanitizing stations. One will be stationed by the door um, with a mask dispenser for those people who are coming into the theater who have not been vaccinated, um, that we would ask them to wear a mask. Uh, and we also have purchased four um, air purifiers for the theater building with HEPA filters so we can be cleansing the air of uh, airborne uh, virus. Um, and those will be in strategic locations through the theater. We have a big one for the where the audience would be in the auditorium and smaller ones for backstage, the lobby and the area where the, uh, the cast uh, and crew prepare. Um, so we will be having those things in place with the plan before we open for live shows. Um, the other thing that we talked about in terms of reopening subcommittee and looking at what the state guidelines currently are uh, even though they're relaxed from what they were, were before, um, is that there still are some guidelines about distancing of performers, and especially where that, where that comes into um, singing and playing uh, wind instruments. Um, and because, for those reasons, um, you know, we talked about scheduling the season this year so that the musical Bridges of Madison County that started rehearsing, I think, two years ago, um, uh, would be scheduled to um, come back in May when we're hoping that um, the restrictions will be able to be further um, lessened uh, and we'll be able to have performers on stage that don't have to be 10 feet apart when singing um, because the, uh, the romantic scenes don't work so well that way. That's, that's where we're, we're coming from in terms of that. The other thing is that um, the, uh, we realize that for, in terms of COVID and where we're at right now, what the current restrictions are, um, that the plan is to uh, reopen the um, season with a virtual production first. Um, and I am happy to say that uh, the director of the first production, um, Kai Chow is uh, with us tonight. And um, he will be um, directing a show called Love Sick um, by John Cariani. Um, uh, and I'm going to open up, ask him to unmute so Akai can tell us a little bit about the show. And um, we can talk about the scheduling for that as well. Hi, everybody. So um, yes, uh, sounds like there's a lot going on with Burlington these days. So that's kind of awesome. Um, if those of you, I'm sure that everybody on the play reading committee is really familiar with the production or the play. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's 
it's an interesting title and what intrigued me about this not only as your first production for the season is that we'll be doing this um probably very smartly because who knows what's going on with the delta variant um but we'll be doing the full production via zoom plus we won't have any seats from what i hear quite yet so that'll help out um but that allows us to really widen the scope so um and i know alicia and jason <clears throat> excuse me have been very integral in making sure that we can provide a very diverse cast and production team and everything else. But the play itself is um, a series of vignettes that kind of all simultaneously happen at about 7.30. Um, and it's all about couples, their relationships, um, clearly about being in love. And obviously the second part of it, sick, is um, different interpretations. So. Um, <laughs> It's a lot of highs and lows, which is really interesting as well. Um, but uh, it's going to be a really great take because one of the things that really drew me to this was John Cariani's specific sentence. The cast should reflect the increasing diversity in America and the suburbs. And uh, so part of that, we I was talking with Robert and Martha about this and setting up the auditions, which will be coming up really quickly. Um, it'll be the last week of August. Um, we said August 22nd and 25th. Um, so Sunday and Wednesday, we'll conduct the auditions by Zoom as well. And then callbacks on Thursday the 26th, if we need it. Um, and it's written in such a way that you can cast it with two men and two women or my open interpretation and really taking John Cariani's line, the cast should reflect the increasing diversity in America and its suburbs, um, including everything in Burlington, um, is really opening that up. And I, I think there's a lot of ways to interpret that. So um, we really want everybody to come out for the auditions and really see what kind of stories we can create about these relationships, these couples relationships, because genders will play a role. And I think, you know, yeah, not that gay is mainstream or the LGBTQ plus the plus part is not as mainstream, and I think we need to explore that a little bit more. Um, and also not to downplay heterosexuality, but that's still important, that it's still mainstream as well. But I just think it opens up the stories a lot um, to different interpretations um, and the way we see the world. And I think there's a lot of commonalities that people don't always see that all relationships, it really doesn't matter whether you're transgender, whether you're bi, whether you're gay, whether you're straight, male or female, you kind of all have, we all have the same emotions. So um, those are the stories that I think will really resonate with people. Um, so with that, um, I gave you the audition dates that we came up with, and we're actually looking at production dates of the not the last two weekends in October, because I really don't want to affect anybody's Halloween, but the 15th, 16th, and 17th of October, and then the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and possibly the 24th of October. Um, and it was really funny because Robert and I, Robert and Martha and I had this conversation. The plays, the vignettes, kind of all take place at 7 30 p.m on a friday night so we're going to start the performance the zoom performances all at 7 30. um so that'll be a little tie-in for that but don't want to give it all away but um please 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 um it's it's one of those things where we can really open this up and really include and um talk about it and a lot of it with our community, not just community theater, but with the BIPOC community is the word of mouth. 
um, when they feel it's a safe space to play, when it's um, a supportive group, that word of mouth is really important. So we wanna spread that word to have everybody audition. Um, Zoom also is an interesting platform which allows you to stretch your arms and embrace people who may be performing from Los Angeles or who may be performing from overseas. Um, it, it does a lot to allow us to embrace more people, but understanding that it is community and we wanna build up Burlington, but it'll give Burlington a lot more exposure as well. So that's my little snippet. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to email me. I don't have the Burlington address yet, but you can email me at Kai Chao, K-A-I-C-H-A-O at Comcast.net. Or you can always reach me through Robert or Martha as well. And um, I'll leave it at that. Great. I just wanted to say, um, I did love sick with the acting out theater company. And we also did it with uh, same sex couples. Uh, you know, um, so I mean, it works and it lends itself very well to that. So, yeah, there are actually there are two vignettes specifically written for same sex couples, but obviously open to more interpretations with other vignettes. I'm sorry, Kai, when are the auditions? Uh, we are looking at two weeks, um, August. Sorry, I'm looking at September right now. Okay. August 22nd, Sunday, August 22nd, and Wednesday, August 25th. So we'll have a weekend and a weekday. Gotcha. Is the announcement going out soon? Just it will be going out. Um, I emailed Robert and Martha literally half an hour before our meeting today. So. Oh. <laughs> So our plan is to launch this um, hopefully by tomorrow or Saturday, if that way people are looking on social media and different things like that. Great. Awesome. Sounds awesome. Looking forward to it. Likewise. The other thing that um, when we talked with, with Kai, uh, even though it's a virtual production, we still do need to have some people um, to work on the, on the show. Um, so some of the roles that we're looking for in terms of the show um, is obviously to have a, a stage manager, um, and they're not, not actually managing the stage, but kind of managing that virtual space that is Zoom um, with the actors um, and with the, the tech people, um, and looking for a, a tech director, somebody who is, you know, handy with Zoom, um, and especially with uh, virtual backgrounds is one of the things that we were looking at. Um, and, and Kai is also interested in having some, um, some graphics between scenes, correct? Um, correct. And, and also probably, you know, we probably also need for the production a couple of people who um, would be, you know, working with uh, props and costumes, um, even though people will be in their own locations and be on, on Zoom. Um, we still want to make sure that we give the production the look and feel that that you know Kai wants for it, um, and it makes it interesting for the audience. So, uh, if you are interested in working on something like that, here's one of the volunteer opportunities. Um, you know, let us know, um, and, uh, and and we'll uh, we'll make sure that uh, you get to talk with Kai about his ideas and see if it's a good match. So. Um, Anything else, Kai, or any other questions for Kai? All right, I will take that, take that as a no. All right, thanks, Kai. Um, I'm also gonna um, uh, just fill you in on kind of the rest of the season. So we're gonna kick it off with Love Sick. Um, we are still hoping um, that we're gonna be able to move back into the, into the theater space um, either with the new seats or with seats that we um, rent or borrow. We're still aiming to be able to do that in November for another production, um, but we haven't exactly set the schedule for the kind of those two middle productions as it were, um, but we do know what they're going to be. 
so we're also going to be doing a play called Boy by Ann Ziegler, um, which was inspired by a true story. It explores the tricky terrain of finding love amidst the confusion of sexual identity and the inextricable bond between a doctor and patient. It's set in the 1960s, where a well-intentioned doctor convinces the parents of a male infant um, to raise their son as a girl after a terrible accident. Two decades later, the repercussions of that choice continue to unfold. So it's uh, it's something that deals with sexual identity and and you know there's a good good amount of drama to it. Um, the other play that will be uh, produced be between uh, Love Sick uh, and the Bridges of Madison County uh, will be Paint Night, which is when six uh, women get it's, it's Paint Night by Carrie Krim. Um, and uh, sorry, guys, but it's a play that has uh, six uh, female characters in it. Um, so the six women get together for a much needed girls night out and the plan is to eat, drink and to create works of art at a local um, paint and sip night. Um, but then when the alcohol starts to take effect, so the truths start to come out, insecurities are revealed um, and six carefully curated lives begin to show their cracks. So um, Paint Night is going to be quite a production. Um, and uh, there's, there's going to be lots of moments of comedy and drama as well. Um, and then Bridges in Madison County, probably most people know it in one version or another, maybe some from the movie. Um, but there is a musical uh, version with uh, music and lyrics by Jason Robert Brown, book by Marcia Norman. Um, that production will be directed and choreographed by Jason Herwin. Um, it's based on the best-selling novel and um, developed by the Pulitzer Prize and Tony Award-winning creative team of Jason Robert Brown, who wrote The Last Five Years, Parade, Songs for a New World, and Marcia Norman. Um, and it's the story of Jessica of Francesca Johnson, a beautiful Italian woman uh, married to an American soldier. Uh, to flee the world war ravaged Italy. And she looks forward to four rare days alone as her family uh, on the Iowa farm, as her family goes off to the state fair. Uh, and then a regularly handsome stranger, a National Geographic photographer shows up. His name is Robert Kincaid and um, a romance ensues. So a romantic uh, comedy. Um, and that will be scheduled for um, May of 2022. Um, that's a show that we had already was well into rehearsals, was cast well into rehearsals um, before COVID shut us down. And uh, we had tried to reschedule it a couple of times. So we do still, um, we're still very lucky to have some of the original cast members who are available to, to do the show in May of 22. Um, and there will be open, uh, there will be casting for some of the other roles um, where we uh, don't have people to um, available to play them anymore. So that's the plan for the coming year. Um, and um, everybody, please um, not only think good thoughts, but um, encourage people to get vaccinated and to be safe um, so that we can move back into the theater because that's truly what we want, bottom line. All right, uh, any questions in terms of that? If not, I'm gonna talk a little bit about volunteer opportunities. We talked a little bit about um, painting the inside of the theater um, black as we move towards the new seats, the platforms will be built and move towards the new seats. Um, we are also trying to do some uh, renovation to what we call the rehearsal room, um, which is on the other side of the, the building um, where we're gonna be decluttering. Um, but we will soon be looking for people who feel safe coming in, either wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, but definitely with the ventilation that we'll have set up in the room um, to do some painting of the ceiling and the walls um, to freshen it up and, and make it look cleaner and, uh, and more of a pleasant place to work. So if you haven't already and you'd like to you know, be considered for volunteer or find out about the volunteer possibilities, um, on the website, you can sign up for our volunteer mailing, mailing list, which is a subset of our full mailing list or the show mailing list. All right. Any, any questions on any of that for now? 
Uh, hearing none, I am going to um, move along to the treasurer's report. Um, now, we have not had uh, somebody in the treasurer's position for this past year. Um, however, um, uh, Tim Rose graciously agreed to, um, to stay on uh, and do the treasuring. And he also did a lot of the training um, with Wes in terms of the day to day entries, uh, bill payment and depositing and, uh, and bringing him up to speed on QuickBooks and the chart of accounts for the organization. So uh, Tim is on a vacation touring the country right now and is not able to be with us. Um, but Wes was able to pull some reports so I can give you an abbreviated um, uh, treasurer's report. Um, and to preface the treasurer's report, I just want to say that we, um, uh, the Burlington players are very lucky to have a collaboration uh, with the Hanscom Federal Credit Union that we've had for many years, um, where when uh, people join the credit union and they take out a loan, um, they're asked to join one of uh, four different organizations in the community. Um, and the Burlington Players was lucky enough to be one of those. Um, so we get uh, donations in the form of kind of memberships from the Hanscom Federal Credit Union. And that has allowed us to really ride up this, the storm of COVID. Um, so we have um, three accounts, three accounts for the Burlington Players um, right now. We have a cash account at Citizens Bank, uh, which is where we would pay most of our bills from. Um, the current balance at the end of last month for that account was $16,269.71. We also have a cash account at Hanscom Federal Credit Union. And at the end of the month of July, the cash balance was $14,920.56. And we have a savings account uh, with the Hanscom Federal Credit Union um, and in that account. We have a balance at the end of the month of July of $294,191.64. So obviously um, we are in a, in a good position in terms of being able to um, you know, pay, for, pay for performing. Um, and uh, if we needed to, if the um, uh, city of Burlington decided to do something else with the building that we're currently in, you know, we would be able to look for other space and be able to move and, and continue to operate. So that's a, a good and valuable position to be in. Uh, are, is there any question in terms of, of that? I know it's a very abbreviated treasurer's report, but um, at this point, we don't really have a treasurer to answer a bunch of questions in terms of that. But those figures are as of the um, end of the month of July. Um, with Wes um, estimating what he knew to be outstanding as well. If there are no questions about that, I would entertain a motion to accept the report as delivered. So moved. And that was moved by Phyllis. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Kate Gluck. Um, is there any discussion on that? Hearing none, I will ask people to vote to accept the treasurer's report as delivered. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? And any abstentions? Hearing none, the treasurer's report is accepted as delivered. Thank you. Um, next, I want to move on to um, it was alluded to earlier, but during this past year, we, we lost uh, two um, lifetime members of the Burlington Players. And so those are people who have um, been recognized as lifetime members for their extraordinary contribution to the group. Um, and those two lifetime members we lost over the past year were Phil Harding um, and Karen Berglund. Um, Kate, I'm gonna ask uh, Kate, because she uh, has memories of, of working with Phil Harding uh, to talk a little bit about him and uh, let us know about his contributions. 
Hi, um, and, and I really do welcome anybody else who knew Phil to, if they want to share, please, please absolutely do. I was quite young when I knew Phil. Um, as you know, I grew up in the Burlington Players and, and Phil joined Burlington in the 70s um, and was here until he moved to Florida in the early 2000s. He starred in countless productions with his He's very tall and a lot of stage presence and big beard. And he often played bad guys. So I was terrified of him as a kid. His Lee and, and True West was ter just t absolutely terrifying. Um, but he was not like that at all in real life. He was lovely and funny and warm and, and just hilarious, really enjoyed every moment but so serious about the work. You know, he's extremely professional, absolutely dedicated. Anybody who did a show with him would, would talk about that part of it. And it wasn't just the acting. He, he built sets um, from nothing. He had a vast collection of tools and his garage was kind of legendary. Um, and was facilities manager. You know, he, we, we moved into the Playhouse in 84, 85. And he just knew how to do everything. And you could always go to him and he either knew it or he'd figure it out. <laughs> um, but I guess uh, the legacy really is uh, the laughter and the kindness. Uh, that, that's what I remember most about him, being absolutely terrified of him and think, him thinking it was funny <laughs> and then going out of his way to make me feel comfortable and, and then talking to other people who would just say, oh, he's just, he's just the kindest man. I, I asked a couple of people who I knew weren't going to be here tonight, and, and they all said the same thing, that he was just, he was so great to work with because you could trust him completely on stage, um, but he, he had nothing but fun and kind of goodness to him. So I, I, if anybody else has any special memories of Phil, um, I'd love to hear them. I don't know if anybody else knew him. Yeah. There used to be a, a, a couch in the back of the theater where the booth is now. And I think Dusty McNeil and I sat on that couch every single performance of True West, <laughs> watched it because it was so compelling. All right. Thanks, Kate. Okay. Any memories? Uh, just let me know. If not, I'll uh, I'll talk a little bit. I'm going to actually share my screen so you can look at a, a picture of Karen Berglund. Uh, oh, I can get a picture of Phil. Oh, if there is, yeah. Yep. Oh, you go ahead though. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna It'll take a second. I'm going to just put up the picture of Karen Berglund. Um, so this is this is Karen Berglund. Um, some of you may um, remember her from recent years being in the audience. Um, and when we first heard about the, the passing of Lifetime member Karen Berglund, we were saddened that she would not be able to try out the new seats in the theater. And selfishly, that we would uh, not have the benefit of having her laugh in the audience for a comedy we were doing. She had an infectious laugh and was a great supporter of the Burlington Players. And that's how uh, we knew of her in recent years. But she had a history with the group. Um, one longtime Burlington Players member remembered um, that Karen was a wonderful person, so wickedly funny with a great laugh. She participated in countless BP shows over the years in every way. Um, but this person says, I knew her best um, from when she would pitch in as an adult in the Windmere shows. She was endlessly patient with us kids, was always having fun with us as one of the gang too. At the memorial service for Karen, we discovered that the themes of her life were um, faith, family, and fun, and she had all three in abundance. During the service, her son recalled how they would come to the Burlington Players shows together as a family and had such wonderful times. It was through Karen bringing her family to the theater that we started our collaboration with, with what is now the Hanscom Federal Credit Union. <sighs> Karen and her family thought so highly of the players that they requested donations in her memory 
to the Burlington players in lieu of flowers at her memorial. We are forever grateful to Karen Burke. And Kate, if you have a, if you have a picture. I didn't, I didn't know that was how we came to have Hanscom. Yes, it was through her, uh, through her daughter-in-law. Daughter -in oh my gosh. Yes. Wow. I was the one that wrote the thing about Windmere, about her, yeah. it wasn't Windmere then, it was teen, but she would, she was always part of that group. And we were, you know, teenagers and horrible, you know, annoying. And, <laughs> and, and she was just, <laughs> she was one of the, she was one of the kids. She was one of the gang. Really just a classic laugh. I mean, her laughter is, uh, um, if you can make it so I can share the screen, I can show you a fun picture of Phil. I don't know if that's possible. Uh, yeah, I, I do have it checked off now. Yeah. I don't see that. Uh, that I'm going to try yeah. see if this works. Can you see that? Yeah. There. So this is this is Phil here in an early production. I think that's Cheryl Salatino, if you know her. And then this one is fun. This is Phil here. That's Tim Rose. <laughs> oh my. So young. And there's a couple more here. These are old. That's Line and Winter. This is rehearsing. This is Phil in the middle, just giggling. Uh, yep, very shy. You can see, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So there you go. Thank you. It's great. Thank you both. Those were both lovely tributes. Thank you so much. All right. Um, anything more uh, from people in terms of Phil or or Karen Bergman's? If not, we'll move on to um, the uh, elections of officers and committee members. Um, and as we move into that, I'm just going to uh, just mention to people as a reminder um, that to be eligible to vote, uh, you must have worked with the group in, in some way over the last few years um, with the uh, uh, two of the last three or three of the last six Playhouse productions can be a paid member of the group. Um, and the, uh, the, for anybody who doesn't know, the um, membership is $12 a year. Um, now, the production, the participating with the group can be anything involving uh, any of the productions for Burlington Players, when their Family Theater, Children's Theater Workshop. Um, helping out includes not only performing, but working backstage, volunteering in any capacity, clean the theater, um, ushering, any of that, that kind of activity that we haven't had over this last year, but it can also include um, landscaping in the Memorial Garden or any type of work like that. So we encourage you to pay your membership online at the Burlington Players website. www.players.com. All right, so um, with that as an introduction, um, I am going to um, the uh, nominating committee this year uh, was comprised of Leslie Wagner, Richie De Jesus, Jan Ferguson, and Boot Boutwell. And I believe Leslie is going to be presenting the, um, the nominees uh, from the nominating committee for the positions. Well, did, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm technically challenged. <laughs> um, I'm Leslie, and um, I just want to take an opportunity to thank you, Robert, for all your support during this nominating period. And for my committee members, Boot, Jan, and Richie, and I apologize for the 6,000 emails that I've sent everyone but uh, it was just necessary for communication purposes. Um, so the current nominations uh, are as follows. For President, Robert Halsey. Treasurer, Kirsten Lockbury. Secretary is Jan Ferguson. Director of Facilities, Chris Rose. Director of Outreach, Jason Hare-Wynn. And Director of Box Office, Monica Bruno. 
Uh, we have for director at large, then those are two year terms. For director of large, we have director at large, we have uh, Kristen Hughes and Chiara Lamarine Buchanan. Those are one year terms. On the play reading committee, uh, we have Chris Rose, John Pease, Hannah Clifford, Kim Anton Myatt, Matt Garland, and Lou Fuco. Um, one of these individuals um, who is on the board will have to be nominated by the board from my understanding. And um, for the Kodiak committee, we have Lex Blair, Matt Garland, Allison Waters Short. And that is what we have currently. Um, Alicia has graciously um, offered her help to assist and guide everyone until we get some new members uh, on that committee. And the nominating committee for 2021-22 will be Boot, me, myself, and Jan Ferguson. And we will do what Alicia said, and I think start earlier. We sort of came upon us very quickly and uh, have, have more time to uh, do the work. Uh, so that is where we are right now with our nominees. Um, how shall we proceed on that, Robert? So I can, um, I think I have a list that I can share so people can see the list of the nominees as proposed. What is the, the committee? committee? Uh, okay, uh, Alicia talked a little bit about it earlier, um, but yeah, it is. I joined late, so. Oh, okay, um, sure. Uh, it is the committee uh, on uh, on diversity, inclusion, and anti-discrimination. Okay. So uh, the committee's work will be um, to find ways that the that the group can become more diverse and more inclusive, um, and that we can better represent the community in which we perform. So. Um, and they'll be working, obviously, with not just the board, but all of the committees of the Burlington Players and all of the members of the Burlington Players that, um, so that we can become a more diverse, inclusive organization. Uh, Alicia, do you have anything you want to add to that description? No, I think that adds it. I think that puts it into a nutshell for me. I understand that. You know. All right, Thank let me try to... Let me try to find the, um, the list of nominees. Oh, I think I've got it. Okay. All right. So can people see the, the list of the um, nominees and the committees? Um, the uh, Kodiad committee uh, also uh, as- Robert, can you plus, increase the size on that? It's very difficult to see. Oops, I went the wrong way. I think you can pinch it open with, I don't know what, it, maybe you don't have a touch screen. Uh, oh. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can. Robert, at yeah. the bottom right hand corner, it says 100%. You can increase it from there on the word. All right, I think I'm going to, this will increase it to the point where people will be able to yep. read the glasses, but it won't show everything on one screen. Um, but this is the, the top section. So the, um, the top section is the top section are the positions that are two year terms on the board. Um, and then below that are the director at large positions that are one year terms. Um, and then the play reading committee is also a, a one year term. Um, and as Leslie mentioned, one of the people on the play reading committee, uh, and that would be Chris, um, would have to be approved by the by the board um, to be to serve as liaison between the board and the play reading committee. Um, and then for the co-diad committee, um, we have three. There's three uh, nominees currently. Um, that committee according to the bylaws, also includes the um, director of outreach, 
um, who is uh, Jason Hare Wynn. So uh, that position is already on that committee and that committee, according to the bylaws, can have a full complement of up to seven members. Um, so in addition to the director of outreach um, and these three people who were nominated, there could be an additional three people um, named to be on that committee. And then the nominating committee is uh, three members who are selected by the annual meeting and then two members that would be appointed um, by the president um, to, the, to the committee at a later time. So any other questions in terms of that? No. Or any questions for, um, for Leslie and the nominating committee? Robert, could I see the play rating committee just so I can put it in the minutes, please? Sure. Thank you. Robert, will you be accepting nominations from the floor? Yep. Yep. So if there are, if there are no more, if there are no questions for Leslie from um, uh, about the nominees from the nominating committee, um, uh, then we will open it up. So if there's no more questions, does anybody have any questions before we move on to that? Okay. All right. If there are no more questions for Leslie, thank you, Leslie. And we'll uh, open it up to, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. No, I'll shut. Okay. Um, let me just open it up. Yeah. Let me just open it up to nominations from the floor. Um, I would like to nominate uh, Kiara Lammering uh, for Kadaya. She has just expressed interest. Right. That's great, Kiara. That'd be terrific. And and. Uh... You express interest, Kiara. You are willing to serve on the committee. It's a it will be a one year term. Yes, I am. Okay, great. Thank you. Are there any other nominations from the floor? All right. Let me just check the chat. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, All right, hearing none, um, I would uh, entertain a motion uh, from the membership uh, to allow the recording secretary, who would be Jill Fleming, for tonight only, uh, <laughs> one uh, vote for the ballot as presented by the nominating committee, with the addition of Chiara Lamarine um, to the Kodiad committee. Like the motion. I agree. Okay, so I, I think the motion was made by was that Matt? Me. You. Okay. You. Okay. And do we have a second? I I'm second. Jill. And uh, I'm sorry, who I'm I missed who came in there next to second. Sorry. Leslie, I okay. did. Okay. Robert, could you stop sharing your screen? I think that might. Sure, that's you. gonna. All right, there we go. All right, so we have a motion and it's seconded. Is there any discussion? All right, barring any discussion on that, all those in favor of allowing the recording secretary, um, Jill Fleming to cast one vote for the, the ballot as presented by the nominating committee, plus uh, Chiara Lamarine uh, serving on the uh, Kodiad committee. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Are there any abstentions? One abstention, I believe. Okay. All right. I hereby cast my vote to accept the election of the new board positions. All right. As acting secretary. All right, thank you. Um, congratulations to the new board members. 
Um, and uh, great thanks to the, the people who are leaving the board, um, but not leaving the players. Uh, Alicia, Lenny, uh, Craig, um, thank you for your work this past year and over the years. And um, we want to continue to see you in the Park Playhouse when it's safe to be there. All right. Uh, the, the next item on here is just submission of plays for 20, the 2022-2023 season. We now have a brand new play reading committee. So oh my God, I got I'm not on the play reading committee. Yes. I can't believe it. Kate is, uh, is off the play reading committee after 10 years. So. 10 years. Oh. Woo. Yes. Thank you. Um, I cannot well believe I'm not on the play. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. We're going to be picking your brain, that's for sure. I'll say, I'll, I'll for help. sure help. Well, you, you're going to be handing over your spreadsheet for one. You need my yeah. my spreadsheet from now. Spreadsheets, spreadsheets, and how you do the how you do the uh, the voting at the marathon. That's that's the other trick. But in terms of submitting plays for the 2022-2023 season, anybody can submit plays um, for the play reading committee to take up and look at. Um, as Alicia spoke about earlier, um, you know, more diversity of those stories is really important. So if you know of a good story that should be told that we can tell, um, you know, please get it to the play reading committee. We haven't set a deadline for closing those submissions, but you can go online at the Burlington Players website, www.burlingtonplayers.com. Um, there's a play reading page. And you can go in there and you can submit suggestions to PRC at BurlingtonPlayers.com. And we'll make sure that those get to the current committee. Um, just to talk briefly about what their process is, they'll take all the plays that are submitted. And through a series of cuts, they'll cut those down from most of the time between 50 and 60, they'll start with maybe more. Um, cut them down first to 30 and then get approval of the membership at a special membership meeting and then cut them down to 12 and then get approval for those 12. Um, and then we have something called the play reading marathon or play selection marathon, which is a fun time where people actually take part and read parts of the shows. We maybe listen to music if we're looking at musicals. Um, and then the membership gets to vote on what shows they want to have done and, and try to balance the season. So it's an exciting process. It's a lot of reading for the people on the play reading committee, but it's an exciting opportunity for us to find some shows that haven't been done to death and tell some of those stories that need to be told. So any questions on that? Do, um, do we have access to the that email box, all of us, or is it that control? Right, right now, I'm the only one that has access to it. I will send you mm -hmm. all, this group of you, um, the password. And then if you want to keep that password or change it, it's up to you. So that's, it's just a, it's a Google email. That's all yeah. it is. Oh, all right. Because I was going to say, like, you know, maybe if there's just one person who's the head of the committee, and then they'll yeah forward. you'll have to decide amongst yourself who's, who that person's going to be right pretty sure so, yeah pretty you sure it's should... john since he spoke first <laughs> <laughs> you should probably have a meeting and figure it out you don't want yes. that <laughs> <laughs> all right okay john it's you congratulations no 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 uh, God, no <laughs> so when the yeah when the committee gets together you can get together and decide who who will serve as the chair of that committee. Um, that's the way it works according to the, the procedures. So uh, anything else in terms of that? If not, I will ask if there is any new business for the group at the annual meeting tonight. So uh, what are you guys doing sorry. for fundraisers? Oh, so I'm um, sorry, I think, I think Jason, we, you, you had your pen up. Uh, John can go first. Of course, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Jason. I was going to ask, are you guys doing anything for, as fundraisers or anything like that? Well, I can answer that. We're, um, 
in conversations with a few folks in Burlington, including the Bollywood studio, which we've been going back and forth with for a year in terms of COVID safety and things of that nature. So um, open for suggestions. All right, well, I, I, I'm doing what I did for QP. Uh, I've been putting a show together uh, and I would also have other people singing with me. So that's something I've been doing. I, uh, I did a drag show for um, QP. How long ago was that, Phyllis? That's gotta, gotta be. Eight years? Robert, when did you start singing again? <laughs> I, d I don't, the time is a blur right now because of COVID, Philip. Yeah, I know, I can't remember I know, it either. Was, it, was before, it was before 15, Forum. 15 years yeah. ago, it's more, way before Forum. About eight years, it's about eight oh, years old. More than that. Maybe 10. And yeah, just to and be clear, I, I, John was the only one in drag. <laughs> well, I, that's because I was the host, that's why. But I, I, we did, and I would love to do that again. And uh, I would also love to do that for QP, and I want to start doing the that for different theater groups to raise uh, money for them. Because I know everybody's been hit by the COVID experience. So I would love to do that. And if it's something you guys want to entertain and talk to me more about, let me know. John, why don't you send me some information about what you're thinking in terms of your act, if you have any videos regarding it, and then maybe we can discuss, you know, I don't think fundraising for Burlington, but possibly working with other organizations in the community that we may be able to give back to may, may okay. work. Yep. So yeah, definitely reach out to me, Jason at Burlington Players. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the, the other thing that I wanted to say was that new board members, um, I'll be sending out uh, the self-guided anti-racism um, packet and training. So if you can, you know, go through that at your own pace and um, then on our first meeting or our second meeting, we can, we can sort of talk about it. Yeah. And that's all. Thank you. Welcome. Great. I think, I think um, in partial response to your suggestion, John, I think one of the things as opposed to fund, because of the position that the Burlington Players is in, I think in, instead of fundraising necessarily for the organization. You know, Jason's talked about doing some more outreach type of activities to bring in new members, people that we haven't maybe seen before. Um, so it still could work with the kind of format that you're talking about, but we just would wanna make sure that, that whatever we do would allow opportunity to, to bring in people who we haven't been traditionally working with so that you know, we're more inclusive and, and bring new members in. Okay. All right. Any other new business? Looking around. Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. So moved by Jan Ferguson. Do I have a second? That's Phyllis. <laughs> and Phyllis? It was okay. Phil. <laughs> oh, okay. I saw Jan waving at me. I was like, oh. <laughs> all right. All those, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Uh, hearing none, the meeting is officially adjourned. <laughs>